Welcome to episode number two from chapter four. In this episode, we're going to explore the effect of latitude on climate and how that effect creates the three different climate zones that you're going to find on Earth. So what is the effect of latitude on climate? Well, first thing you want to know is the farther away from the equator you are, the less sunlight and the less heat that you're going to have. Now pay attention down here to the key idea, okay? There's going to be an unequal heating of the planet due to latitude. And latitude of the Earth is going to create ocean current. Now, let me rephrase this again. The unequal heating that's caused by this change in latitude is going to create ocean currents and prevailing wind patterns. This is going to be done through a process called convection. Now remember, the Earth is a sphere, all right? So if the sun is over here, okay, it's going to be straight down right about here. But here, the angle is going to be less, and that's going to pretty much equal less heat. And that's what's going to create this unequal heating, all right? So remember, unequal heating leads to ocean currents and prevailing wind patterns. And we got a graphic to show this to you. All right, so here we've got the wind patterns. And you'll notice that the Earth is actually, let's get a color in here for you. The Earth is actually rotating in this direction. So as the Earth is moving this way, the wind down here on the equator is moving in the opposite direction. It's kind of going this way. All right. So that what we have is northeast trade winds around the equator. And if you go below the equator, now they're southeast. Okay. As you get up here towards where we are, you get the westerlies. So our wind comes from the, from the west. And you get up much towards the poles, they're going to come a little bit more from the east. All right, So the, the revolving of the earth and the unequal heating is going to lead to um, these different wind patterns. Now here are the ocean currents. And these are also driven by the, the uh, spin of the earth, but much more important through a process called convection. And during convection, we have basically hotter molecules moving around and they're going to create these currents all right so this here would be like the gulf stream uh, you've got currents that move along this way along the equator and in fact sometimes in the equator we don't have much moving along they call those the doldrums okay and then here around antarctica we've got them spinning around non-stop and right down here the south of, of south america these are some of the most turbulent seas that you're going to find on this planet, okay? So the latitude of the Earth leads to this unequal heating that leads to these ocean currents and the wind patterns. That's the main thing you need to learn from, from these first two slides. All right, let's learn about the various climate zones proper. All right, the first uh, climate zone we're going to learn about is the polar one. And these are the ones that are at the, the opposite poles of the Earth, so at the North Pole and the South Pole. So think of the Arctic Circle and then think of Antarctica. All right, so these guys are the farthest from the equator, and because they're the farthest from the equator, they get the least amount of sunshine, and that's because the sun is at a very low angle, and this is their actual latitude if you were to actually look at the numbers on a GPS uh, or you know a map that shows all the latitude. So least amount of sun, farthest from the equator, and therefore, they're going to have the less heat, the least amount of heat. All right. Next one is the temperate. This is the one that you and I live in. Uh, this one comes between the tropical, which we're going to learn about here in just a little bit, and the polar zones. And this one has the changes of seasons. And this is actually the zone where you and I live in. All right. So temperate, you, you typically have a spring, a summer, a fall, and a winter. Okay. Some temperate areas, though, may not have those distinct seasons as, as much as we would have here in Indiana, but they'll still have a little bit of it. Think of Florida, southern part of Texas, Mexico, etc. All right, let's move on to the last one, tropical. Now, this is the one that's nearest, and it includes the area around the equator. Now, in the tropical zone, the sun is mainly directly overhead all year long, or at least for part of the, of the year. So you're not going to have no real changes of seasons like a fall, a spring, a winter, and a summer. But it's very common for these areas to have a wet and a dry season. Not everything in the tropical zone is a rainforest, although 
a good portion of it can be, but not everything is. So you can expect to have maybe a wet and a dry season. All right. It's bordered in the north by the Tropic of Cancer, and it's bordered to the south by the Tropic of Capricorn. All right. So let's get rid of that. We'll show you a map of all these guys. Okay. So as you see here, the Tropic of Cancer kind of runs right between Florida and Cuba. The equator obviously runs right through the northern third of South America. And then the Tropic of Capricorn run right down here through like the southern Brazil, northern part of Argentina. So in between these two is the tropical zone. And you notice they're near the equator, so the sunlight's going to be pretty much directly on. Okay, the Arctic Circle runs through northern Canada and Alaska. And then the Antarctic Circle uh, pretty much covers Antarctica. Those would be your polar zones. And then between the tropical zone and the Arctic zones are your temperate zone. As you can see, most of Canada and the United States are smack dab right in the middle of that. Okay, that's going to conclude this episode on the three climate zones. So until the next time, we're going to catch you on the flip side.